Hello, my name is Nicole Carson Boney and I'm a portrait photographer. I'm taking you behind the scenes with me in my Vanity Fair style photo shoot here in my home portrait studio. And I'll only be using three speed lights. And I'm also testing out my new Avazano dark gray fabric backdrop. In this video, I'll show you how I set up the backdrop, set up my three speed lights, style my model, the photo shoot, and then my basic editing workflow. And I'll also show you how I incorporate some portraits of some adorable dogs that I took a while ago into these portraits. And before we go any further, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And there's also a button called Super Thanks. It's below this video with a heart and a dollar sign inside of it. Your small contribution can go a long ways towards helping me make free videos that I can share with you. My Avazano backdrop arrived in this very compact plastic bag. It was hard to believe that there was a 10 by 12 foot backdrop in there. I removed the backdrop from the package and gave it a quick iron to get rid of the major fold lines. My home portrait studio is only 11 by 15 feet and I have a Veripole system with three of my hand painted backdrops hanging on it. I set up my favorite portable backdrop stand to hang up the Avazano backdrop. The poles come in three foot lengths and I attached three sections to create a nine foot pole. This made it easy to clip the 10 foot wide backdrop over the top of it, even though the backdrop comes with a convenient pole pocket sewn across the top. I used several more clips to stretch the backdrop across the two side poles and smooth it out on the ground. It was very easy to work with. This is my model Heidi, and for this photo shoot, I'm gonna go ahead and use a wig. And I love using wigs because they can be styled so quickly and they come in such a wide variety of different lengths and colors and styles. But I buy these on Amazon, they're very inexpensive. And I included a link in the description below to some of my favorite wigs off Amazon. This photo shoot is a little more of a My Fair Lady with kind of a modern twist to it. And that's where the white hair comes in and kind of pushes reality just a little bit. Hey, hi, so I'm just have you hold the front right on your forehead. Let the transformation begin. <laughs> I like using the wigs that have bangs on them because they're a little bit more realistic because it's usually at the hairline that you can tell when someone's wearing a wig. But when we have bangs that can kind of sweep to the side, it kind of helps to camouflage that a little bit more. So I really like using wigs with bangs. And we're going to have a kind of a side sweep for this hairstyle. And looking at the direction of the bangs, we're going to let the hair come around to the same direction that the bangs are going. And so with this hat, I actually bought this at Goodwill, just at a thrift store. And when I saw it, I'm like, oh my goodness, I can do so much with that hat. So it's got all these fun textures and shapes to it. It's also very lightweight. I'm gonna kind of angle it, and I want to angle it so that the open side is on the side of the ponytail, because I know for most of the shots, I'll be coming in this direction. And so I want to be able to have these bangs come around and the hair. And then we want to go kind of as far up off the eyes as we can just so that we'll be able to get light because sometimes that's the challenge with hats is getting light up underneath the hat can be tricky. Let's go ahead and look straight in the mirror. Okay, yep, that looks fantastic. And because her ears are covered, I don't think we need to worry about having any earrings. And I don't think we'll need a necklace either because that would add a center point. And we're kind of going with some asymmetry. The hat is asymmetrical and then the hair is asymmetrical. So I think that looks great. <laughs> Have the room lights turned on, which are a fluorescent, actually they're an LED light, but they're a little bit warm. And so I want, all my flashes are set to daylight, which is cool. So what I have to do then is turn off the room lights and then I've set up some constant lights in here. This is just like a simple ring light that's adjustable on the temperature. And I have one set up here in front and then I have one in the corner. And then I have another, it's called Stella. It's a constant light that's also set up. And that's just to create enough um, light in the room for shooting video. So the speed lights I'm using are just Canon 600EX speed lights. And I have three of them. And I put just a little sticker on the back so I have a letter on them which corresponds on my trigger so I know which light I'm setting up. And they do have a built-in uh, trigger on them. But I found that in my neighborhood here, there's a lot of different signals. And so I was losing the connection between my flashes and just the Canon trigger. So I actually had to then switch out for these Godox triggers or receivers that I put one on each of the flashes and then I'm using then the Godox transmitter. And so I found that this gave me a stronger connection between all the flashes 
in spite of my neighborhood having lots of different channels going on at the same time. All right, so this is my key light flash, and so I'm setting that up over here, and I'm just going to set it up with a simple Westcott softbox. And with the softbox, I went ahead and added double layer of white sheet fabric just to make it even softer in spite of just the, the little liner that comes with the softbox. And this is going to be my key light, and I have my flash as pointing into the back of the softbox. All right, and I'll set the height of this to, so at the bottom of the softbox, it's right at about Heidi's chin. So I have a third speed light that I'm setting up here at the back of the room, just on a tripod. And this is going to act as a very soft fill light on the front of my model. And to make that even softer, I'm using just the Mag Mod. This is the Mag Bounce. And typically, you would have the open side facing your model, but I want this extra soft. So I'm going to turn it away from my model so that it's actually hitting this wall here. And I just have a white sheet hanging on the wall. And so that's going to send in a really soft light on the front of my model. And then you can't see it now, but I have another flash that is set up behind the backdrop. And that flash is really high, almost um, about a foot below the ceiling. And so that flash is going to hit the ceiling behind the model and send down a little bit of light onto the top of her head. So. And then I also have my V flats set up. So I have my white V flat on this side because I want a little bit of bounce to come in from my key light. And then I have a black V flat set up on the opposite side because I don't want light being reflected in anywhere else on the side. I want that light to come mainly from just the softbox. We're going to start with just some test shots. Yeah, see how all our lights are doing. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to turn off all of my lights except for just the light that is up behind my backdrop. So I am using my Canon EOS R and I'm using my 24 to 70 uh, 2.8 lens. And then with my settings, I'm going to set my autofocus to auto eye focus on her eyes. And then for my color balance, I'm setting that to daylight. And then I'm going to set my speed is at 200 for the speed lights. My f-stop I'm going to set at around, let's take that to 5.0. And then my ISO will set around 200. So I have the flash that's behind her just set to an eighth power. And let's go ahead and do a test. There we go. So yes, we can see just that little bit of light that's coming down. I'll take a wide shot, vertical shot, so you can see it hitting the ceiling. There we go. That looks great. So now I'm going to add in my fill light that's coming from behind me. So I'm going to turn that to manual and turn that brightness. Let's go about an eighth power as well. And so what I'm looking for here is just a little bit of fill on the front of her. So now it's time to turn on our key light. Turn that to manual. And I'm going to start that at about one half. So let's do a test shot. There we go. That looks great. So now we're looking a little bit closer. So how do you go ahead and look straight at the camera? So what I'm looking at is how the light is hitting on her nose. And so as I'm looking at this, I do get a nice shadow on the, as I'm looking at her on the right side, but I'd like that to be a little bit more dramatic. So two ways I can do that. I can turn down the fill light that's coming in the front of her. So I'm gonna turn that down to 1 16th. Let's try that. Okay, good, that brought that up a little bit more. So now though, I want to take my key light up a little bit more. Let's go to a 1 half plus 0.7. There we go. And then I think our hair light that's coming down is a little bit bright. So I'm going to turn that down to just 1 8th. Another test shot. Perfect. Okay, that is giving me some nice Vanity Fair soft light. So now I can go in and touch up on hair and then we can work on our posing and position. I want to be able to have Heidi sitting down and I have these white boxes that I made. They're kind of some oversized apple boxes and they have a handle just on one side because then that leaves me three sides that are always solid. And so these are really versatile. This will create kind of a little seat for her. 
And you can look at the link in my description for a video of how I made these apple boxes. And I'm going to simply take a black piece of fabric and cover them. When you're shooting in a small space, <laughs> all the equipment that you have has to serve multiple purposes. So by simply covering it with a black fabric, I now have some black boxes. And I don't mind kind of the draped effect that it creates. Perfect. Okay, Heidi, go ahead and come in. So you're going to sit right down there. Yeah, perfect. No problem. And then what you'll be able to do then is put your elbow onto here. Yes, yeah, so we get a little bit more of a laid back effect. So what I also love doing is including animals in my portraits. And so what we're going to do is set this up so that I could possibly put like a little bird or something maybe on the box right here. And then I also could have a dog sitting on the ground right here, kind of this big blank area. Yeah, so I have ideas of possibly bringing in like a Dalmatian or some type of black and white dog to really bring out the white so that the white is in the flowers. It's really lighting up her face and into the hair. And then if I bring in a dog as well that has some white in it. So it really lets the white pop and then lets our darker colors just recede to the back. So this umbrella is not very tall, but maybe if we had it here and then that hand, yeah, could kind of be right in that area with it. There we go. That brings the arm into a, a good space. My hand is here, and so with this hand, I'm going to turn it this way a little bit more so I don't see the, the front of your hands. <laughs> so we get your pinky a little bit more towards me. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that looks great. So now we need to lower our key light just a little bit since we've lowered Heidi. One of the things I love about the Canon EOS R is the tilt-out screen, and so it makes shots like this really easy to get when I can lower the camera and just be able to tilt the screen to be able to compose my shot. With the auto eye focus, I found it's pretty much sharp every time, so I don't have to put my eye up to the lens to make sure I'm in focus. One more position with your hand. Let's see if we can bring your kind of around so your hand's sort of, yeah, kind of out on this edge. So this little umbrella I just found on Amazon. I really like it because it's a little bit smaller size and the black just helps it stay fairly subtle, but then having some of these lace details on it just makes it really fun. So maybe we could let it kind of create this circular shape behind you a little bit. So maybe bring this hand up and over it, maybe over, rotate around like that. Maybe bring your hand over the top of it. Mm -hmm. There we go. Ooh, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> so what I like about this is it's creating, we have the round shape of your hat, then the round shape of the umbrella right there. And then we could balance that with having a little friend on the box mm -hmm. or even kind of sitting right down here on the ground. So now we're going to have Heidi do some standing shots. And so I'm going to rearrange these boxes slightly to become a essentially a posing table for her or post. And so we'll simply turn these around. Actually, I want it to be a little more narrow to the camera. So we'll keep the narrow side forward Go ahead and cover this. So now we need to raise the height of our key light, of our softbox, since Heidi is going to be standing up. Okay, Heidi, go ahead and come right in here. I'll just have you standing an elbow right there. Go ahead and turn your hips towards the box and have you pop this front knee. Yes, there you go. What this is doing also is just kind of shaping your figure. I designed this dress for my studio wardrobe. So I wanted something that was a little, little dramatic. <laughs> you might not wear every day, but it has some really flattering lines sewn into it. And having that little bit of a train on the bottom just adds some fun drama to it. We'll be shooting all of these vertical. Now I'm going to stand back as far as I can so that um, my distance is around 40. All right, one, two, three. Beautiful. All right, let me do a wide shot so we can see all of our lights. Go ahead and rotate your legs this way. Yep, so now we'll pop this knee. Yep, and again, we'll have that right back there. Nice, and then this back hand just kind of go onto your hip and the elbow just goes behind you. There we go. If it feels a little weird, that means it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that looks fantastic. Push your chin forward just a little bit. There we go. One, two, three. Perfect. And then relax these fingers. Let them have just a little bit of curl to them. At least your pinky as well. Let's just bring in our umbrella somehow on this. Yeah, almost like you could be holding it down kind of more hip level. And then we'll rotate down just a little bit so that stick is at an angle. Okay, chin forward and down just a little bit. One, two, three. There we go. Okay. You got it. Wiggle. <laughs> I have found trying to photograph pets and models in the perfect position at the same time to be superhuman. So I prefer to photograph them separately and then combine them in Photoshop. 
I photographed this adorable little schnauzer almost a year ago with the same lighting setup as Heidi's photo shoot. I do all my sorting and organizing in Exposure X7. I select a photo to edit and then create a Photoshop copy of the image and do the fine editing in Photoshop. I carefully created a clipping path around the little schnauzer in Photoshop and pasted him into my portrait with Heidi. With a few adjustments to his shading, he fits right in. Then after adding a shadow beneath him, I bring the image back into exposure for my final color grading. I photographed this handsome black and white dog a while ago in the same Vanity Fair lighting in my studio. He had a lot of energy and wanted to play with his owner. I don't blame him. It worked best to have the owner step out of the studio and then I calmly sat behind the dog while my husband pressed the shutter button. It's a lot to ask of these cute dogs to hold still for a camera. I find it works best to move very slowly and calmly while quickly taking the shots and then showering them with praise when they're done. I hope you enjoyed going behind the scenes with me on this Vanity Fair style photo shoot. I loved being able to use this Avizana backdrop in the dark gray color. I love how lightweight it is as well as the high quality printed texture and I think the portraits turned out fantastic with it. I included a link in the description below so that you can check out all their amazing backdrops. If you like this video, please don't leave without clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And also, if you consider giving that super thanks, then I can keep making free videos that I can share with you. Thank you so much in advance.